Welcome to Wisdom for Nonprofits, bringing the best business wisdom to the nonprofit world. Proven leaders share their experience, insights, and best practices. Finally, a podcast for the busy nonprofit professional. And now, your trusted advisor, Bettina Meyer Flug. Welcome to another episode of Wisdom for Nonprofits. I'm your host, Bettina Pflug, and today we have a special guest joining us, David Pizarek. David's passion for technology and his expertise in website design and digital marketing make him a valuable resource for nonprofit organizations. But before we dive into our discussions, let's learn a little bit more about David and his journey. From an early age, David's curiosity and love for thinking with tools and technology set him on a path of exploration and innovation. With a toolkit in hand and just three years old, he started breaking things in turn and how to fix them later on. As David's passion grew, so did his knowledge of technology, from mastering command lines on family's Apple computer to honing his skills in graphic and web development, he delves deeper into the world of technology. In the dot-com era, he made significant contributions to startup e-commerce company, helping them uh, raise substantial funding. And mainly, startup, I talk about nonprofits. David's journey led him to work in various marketing and communications roles bringing his expertise to colleagues, university, and even hospitals. And today he just shared with me, he's a mentor for other marketing agencies as well. However, in 2017, he realized his true calling to support organizations dedicated to making a positive impact in society. Like myself, I really enjoy helping for profits. That's when he found Bold Digital, a company specializing in designing and creating brands, websites, intranets, interactive kiosks, and games for nonprofits, NGOs, charitable, and community based organizations, not only in Canada, where he's based, but all over the world. Today, we have the privilege of tapping into David's wealth of knowledge as we discuss website redesign and digital marketing strategies for nonprofits. We will explore the importance of creating an effective online presence, leveraging technology to drive engagement and support, and much more. So without further ado, let's welcome David to our show. David, thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing your knowledge. That means a lot. Thank you so much, Bettina. I appreciate the opportunity. Hi, everybody that's listening in podcast land. Thank you for tuning in. Get ready for an enlightening conversation as we uncover valuable insights on website redesign and digital marketing for nonprofits. Let's dive in. How can well-designed websites enhance the mission and impact of a nonprofit organization? Far too often, nonprofit websites lack any kind of wonderfulness or anything that that really is tied to something trendy in de, in design and when you think about it from the people that you want to attract who is it that you want to attract what are they going to see when they land on your website how does it look is it mobile friendly is it not mobile friendly does it work well can they find information that they're looking for so really you want to have a clear beautifully designed website that one will tell your story. Nonprofits really need to focus on the impact that they have and talking about the impact that they have, because that is going to emotionally connect with your audience and get them to want to be a part of the cause, whether it's volunteering their time, donating physical assets that you might need, donating money, or even just sharing a post that you've got, right? So think about it from their perspective. If your website looks old and outdated, chances are they're just going to leave. They're going to go somewhere else. 
That's right, that's right. And what are some key elements to consider uh, when ensuring a website accessibility for all users? I have some friends who consult for people who has some blind deficiency, and we know that there are several tools to help everyone assess a, a website. Can you give some tips on, on this area? Absolutely. Thank you so much for asking about this. This is one of the biggest issues. My team and I, we've done an audit of over 400 nonprofit and charity websites, and there's so many of them that fail accessibility. So what is accessibility? Let's, let's just, I guess, create a baseline of understanding with regards to that. There are people who are blind or who have physical impairments that don't surf the web the way traditional users do with a mouse and, and a keyboard. So they might use their keyboard to tab through navigation on your website. Um, they might use a screen reader technology. Uh, I came across somebody really, really cool. They had kind of like a book, but it output Braille. Uh, as they were looking at a website, all the content, all the text came out as Braille and they can run their fingers along this and understand what's on the page. I was, like, I was blown away by that. I thought that was really cool. So, wow. That, that's really what accessibility is. It's allowing people who have different um, ways of navigating your site. They might be blind. They might be partially blind. They might have color blindness. What is it that they see? How do they interact with it? What is it that they get from your website? So with that baseline kind of, of understanding, this is what your website needs to have. The two biggest problems that we've come across the most on nonprofit and charity websites is one color contrast. You need to have in order to pass, there's an, uh, an organization it's called the Worldwide uh, Consortium. Uh, it's WWWs. Uh, so it's the, sorry, the W3C. Um, they have guidelines, WCAG 2.1 level AA. And the guidelines for that really outline Web forms, so contact forms on your site, they need to have proper labels, things like that, area tags, stuff like that. Uh, but the two biggest issues that we come across are one, color contrast, to be AA compliant, which is kind of the standard, you need to have four and a half to one color contrast ratio. If you go into Google and you search for color contrast checker, you'll find there's a whole bunch of different ones out there. Pick whichever one you want. You can put your colors in, that you're using. So if you have a turquoise color with black text on it, you can put in the exact hex values or RGB values and put black and you can see what the contrast ratio is. You wanna have four and a half to one. If you have yellow with white text on it, it's gonna be really hard to read, right? That's gonna fail the checker. It's gonna be hard for people, even with perfect 2020 vision, to be able to read that. So that's the biggest uh -huh. culprit. The second one is making sure that your images have what's called an alt tag on them. There's a couple reasons that this is good. One is for accessibility. So imagine there's a picture on a website, the screen reader comes across it. Let's say there's no alt tag on it. It says image. Well, that's, that doesn't help. <laughs> that gives no context to the person that is using this, right? What is it? So you need to make sure the alt text specifies in written word, what the image actually is a picture of. Is it a dog catching a Frisbee? Is it volunteers handing out meals? What, what is it, right? So you wanna put that into there. So that, that helps accessibility. On the other side of it, if you can manage to put in a logical way, the keywords that you wanna be found by Google into the alt tag, you can do some kind of like secret SEO work there to help rank your website higher based on the keywords. But again, it needs to be relevant to the image. So if it was volunteers handing out meals, it could be meals on wheels, volunteers handing out, like the name of your organization's volunteers handing it out. It doesn't necessarily have to be more complicated than that. Those are great tips, yes. And a lot of people start with small websites. Once the organization starts growing, they decide to redesign. So how can a nonprofit identify the most critical aspects to prioritize in a website redesign? What they need to consider 
is this the, the, the time of everything that the time people take when they click? What, what do they need to consider? So page load, which is what you're talking about. How long does it take for the website to load up? That's an important piece. Um, Google has outright said that that's not part of their algorithm anymore, but the site needs to be quick enough that people aren't going to be like, oh, I don't want to wait, and then they leave. So that's in, in terms of page speed. What you need to really do is take a look at your web analytics. If you don't have analytics installed on your site, install it today. If you're using Google Analytics and you're on Universal Analytics 3, so UA3, that stopped collecting data July 1st. So you want to make sure that you upgrade to GA4, Google Analytics 4. That way you can continue to have data so you can go back and make smart decisions about your website. Like what content is popular, for example. So taking that into consideration, when you're thinking about your website, what is it that people are coming to your website to look for? You want to make it easy for them. Usually that means streamlining or fixing the navigation of your website. How many clicks does it take somebody to get to where you want them to go? Those are great tips. I'm writing this down because I'm going to redesign my website. <laughs> That's great. What strategies sure. can effectively facilitate communication and collaboration between a nonprofit and a website development agency? Normally, they have someone supporting them. How can they effectively communicate between each other? So it all starts really with the statement of work, with your contract, with your agreement, whatever it is that you want. You want to make sure that you understand exactly what you're going to get and what you need. And the agency, the freelancer, the volunteer, whoever it is that's helping you with your website, that they clearly understand what you want and that they articulate to you what it is that they can actually do for you. So communication, it's a two-way street. You can say, yeah, we need a new website. And the vendor that you pick goes, yeah, okay, you need a new website. Sure, it'll be $2 million. What are you going to get for, for the money? Money in nonprofits is stretched really, really tight. We know that. I worked in nonprofits for about 16 years full time. I totally get that. You need to really understand what it is that, that you're getting. Now, having said that, you, having a regular cadence of meetings, we meet with our clients on active projects on a weekly basis. That is our sprint cycle. We, we work on a seven day cycle. Uh, a lot of agencies typically will do a two week sprint. For us, we wanna meet more frequently with our clients. We wanna make sure that we have any questions uh, answered by them, any questions they have that we can answer, that we collaborate, that we work closely together. Sometimes the meetings are Five minutes. Do you have anything? No, we don't have anything. No. Okay, great. Have a good week. We'll talk to you next week. Um, sometimes we need other meetings in between. You want to make sure if you're focused on communication, which I think we should all be focused on that, especially if we're paying somebody to, to do work for us, that we're really clear on what it is that they, that they want. What we do, we have a feedback module that we put into our sites as we're building them that you can really easily just click, leave a comment anywhere on the page, change this title to this, or swap this image, you can upload an image right there, or you know what, this doesn't quite look right, we wanna adjust the color a little bit, or something like that, and you can do all of that. And it eliminates the need for taking screenshots, writing really verbose emails, and then all you get back is an email I don't understand, and then you end up having to meet with them. It just saves so much time. So much time. Making sure a company that you've hired, that they've done this before, that they understand the nonprofit, the charity world, and they, they really know what drives the audiences to connect with the organizations. It makes a huge difference having a, an agency that understand about the nonprofit world. I totally agree with you. Because regular agencies, they don't understand about event management, uh, core nonprofits, like donor relationship, all the flow that you need on the website. It's an important fact. And you mentioned about naming the pictures. This is one way for increasing the SEO. Uh, how does the SEO contribute to improving an online visibility and reach uh, more um, possible supporters? We know producing new, fresh content
content on a regular and consistent basis is going to rank you higher in search engine. That's just what it is. It shows the search engine systems, their algorithms, their databases, their AI platforms, whatever it is. It shows that, that you care about your website. So producing content on a regular consistent basis is going to get you most found. We work with our clients to on a content schedule and we sit down, we run this on an annual basis. We'll sit down for an hour, hour and a half. And I know you can't see it because this is only audio. I'm going to like point, I've got this board on the wall behind me over here. We do this with, with our clients, sit down for an hour. What are the questions that people are emailing you about? What are the questions that they're calling about? What programs and services do you have? Who is it that you help? What, what is it that you want donors to know? Over an hour, you can easily come up with 30 or 40 really good topics. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. Most of a year of content, one article a week. Right there, that's 40, maybe 50 weeks of the year, right? That article, you can then take and chunk it up into short little social media posts. You don't have to start from scratch with everything. You can repurpose the stuff that you've got. And then over the year, take a look at your analytics. I talked about analytics before, but this is where it really comes and helps. See what content is resonating, what content is getting traffic. Then you know what you do? You go and make more content that's like that content, similar topic, similar idea, right? If it's resonating, do more of it. What's working is working. Do more. Yeah. And sometimes the nonprofits rely a lot on email marketing as a powerful tool to, to really interact with potential donors or constituents. Um, in what way do you think email marketing can be a powerful tool for them to better engage with their audience? I'm going to start off and tell you what you shouldn't be doing. That's you shouldn't good. be sending <laughs> email on a weekly basis or a monthly basis just asking for money. Nobody wants that. They're just going to hit delete. They might unsubscribe. What they do want is they want to know how is your organization helping? Where's the money going? What are the impact stories? How can you pull at their emotional heartstrings, get them to really care about your organization and what you do so that you can get them later on? I'm not saying never ask for money. Don't do it every single time. You can have a donate link in the email. But you don't have to say, oh, we need your money. We need your funding. We're going to do this. We, we want to build a new wing on the hospital or we're going to uh, feed children in some like third world country. Great. That's awesome. But you've gotten money before most of the time. How are you spending it? What, what, is, what is the end result of those donations? Yeah, telling stories is a, a huge thing on interacting with potential donors. And there are different ways to do that, but I like your idea of seeing what um, it's made, what was successful before, and just repurpose or keep writing about this topic. That's a nice idea to bring more, you know, relevant topic. And uh, why social media presence is so important for nonprofits, and how can it be utilized to drive more engagement and support? I think all of us would love if people just came to our website. Right, because that's our marketing tool. We put our love and blood and sweat and tears into it. It'll be awesome. Realistically, people don't even know about your organization, right? But they are on social. They are algorithms in Facebook and Twitter and TikTok and LinkedIn and in all the different platforms. You can connect more easily with people based on their preferences that way, and you can get in front of them. So you can run marketing ads get in front of them as like a brand awareness type of campaign. You can get into, look, if your organization helps people with heart issues, there are Facebook groups for that. You can get involved in conversation, not always promoting your organization, but get into that space and talk with them. Help them understand, oh, you know, like we're, we're helping people. We're working on getting this and that and helping here with this. You can do all of that without having to actually build your own community. 
Yeah. Is there any platform that you suggest nonprofits using? Because it's really hard to engage in all the channels individually. Um, what kind of platform do you recommend for the nonprofits to have like a single destination to do those interactions? That is a really, really difficult question to answer, Bettina. So <laughs> it comes down to really knowing a few things. Same for business, same for nonprofit. It doesn't really matter. If you are out there trying to connect with people, this is what you need to know. You need to know geographic data. You need to know demographic data. And you need to know psychographic data. So nobody really thinks about psychographics. Psychographics are what happens in somebody's head. What do they care about? What are their likes, their dislikes, all that type of stuff. Uh, on my podcast, I have an episode where I talk about psychographics for nonprofits. Um, but really understanding your audience, where are they spending their time, right? Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Facebook? You really need to know who it is that you're connecting with, what the goal of your organization is. Look, if you're an organization that helps new graduates find jobs, maybe that's a LinkedIn place. Yes, sometimes um, different platforms can bring different profiles, but uh, talking about the tool, I use a tool called Social Bee. They are located in Europe, very good, and just, just launch a place where you can interact with all your social media profiles, make it so much easier instead of going individually one by one to answer all the comments. So I post all my social media posts throughout Social Bee, and then I interact over there. It's very, very easy. They are less expensive than Hootsuite. Hootsuite is amazing, but it's a little bit expensive for some projects. So I, I can put the details on the description of the podcast if you guys want to learn more, but it's very, very cost effective for me. Yeah, one of the people in my team is in Brazil and he was talking about, we were using a, a platform that was like a brand new startup, but we were having some difficulties with it. He said, hey, there's this platform uh, really cost effective. Uh, it's called M Labs, and it's it's a Brazilian company. So some of the English translations aren't quite there yet, but overall it's it's pretty good. Um, and it's like thirteen dollars a month or something. And you can connect per per um, user profile. So you can have multiple, like you can have Facebook and LinkedIn and Instagram and Twitter all in that one profile. So if you manage multiple profiles, you would just need to pay more for, for additional licenses. Of it. But it's really cost effective. So we talked about storytelling. What are some best practices for in inter integrating storytelling in an impactful visual in a nonprofit website? How do you bring Do you put like in the blog content or do you put on the reviews? You have an area with videos. How would you bring storytelling to a website in an efficient way? Because the nonprofit needs to capture this information as well. Sometimes they have journalists who go there, interview the constituents, but how they can expose this in a website in a nice way? A picture can tell a thousand words. A video can tell 10 million words. So video is really the place that you want to be. You can leverage that video on your social channels. If you have a YouTube channel or an Instagram or Facebook, you can put the videos there as well. Um, if you can chunk them into stories that are 20, 30 seconds, that would be really awesome. If you can have like quick little snippets. Uh, again, the repurposing of your content, you have one really great video, maybe it's an, a minute and a half or two minutes, you can chunk it into little things. Um, I think video is really one of the best ways that you can really get across the impact that you have. But to your point, if you have programs and services on your site, get testimonials from people. Have them on there. Let them uh, explain why was this program so great. Interview them. Take a, a quick little quote from them. If you're hesitant because of maybe personal information in having their last name on the site. You can have just like a first name and an initial of a last name. You can, there's, there's ways kind of around it that way. Um, but telling the story is, is really key. And being able to showcase it in a way that's meaningful, that's easily digestible, and makes sense for where you're placing it. That's really the key. 
And you mentioned it's important to name the, the pictures. Should we name the videos as well, very detailed? Or if we put captures on the video, would the SEO read the captures of the video or not? You should definitely have closed captioning. There are services that you can use to get a full transcription. If you use any of those services, I would just still double check it, go through it, spend, spend the time, it's worth it. Sometimes people have some difficult names and the <laughs> it's not a traditional like if your name was bob or john or debbie those are easy names some names are more difficult i'm sure my last name would never get picked up properly by a transcription service so you want to make sure that, that that's all sorted out um so yes using it for closed captioning it's a really good idea to do that for accessibility i don't believe that search engines actually pick up the the closed captioning so what you could do is have a link to the actual transcript and you can have a page on your site that has the transcript. Oh, that's a good idea. I like what you said about meeting with your clients once a year to help them reevaluate what can be done better. And something that I use on my company and some other companies use is the KPIs, key performance indicators. So for a nonprofit, what kind of KPIs would you recommend them to track to be able to see their performance on marketing as a whole? Digital marketing, we can say. But for the most part, you should really take a look at the, these metrics. Number of page views on your website. So there's, there's a bunch of web stuff here. So number of page views that you have, the amount of time that people spend on your site, and the top depending on the size of your site, 10 to 20 pages of your site. Where, honestly, if you have a, if you have a website that's 1,000 pages, I would put money that maybe 20%, 20 pages are getting about 80 to 85% of your traffic. What mm -hmm. are those pages? The reason you want to know what those pages are is that later on, you can go back and look at the pages and you can go, you know what? This is just about this information, but we have a related service. Let's put a link. Let's put a call to action on that page to drive people to the service. And that's that's important stuff that you can only get from, from the actual real data, from the analytics. Um, other KPIs that you might want to track might be email subscriptions. It could be number of opens of your email, uh, like percentage of opens, percentage of clicks, if you send out an email, there should be a call to action in there to get them to do something. Ideally, go through to your website to an article that you've uh, recently posted or an event that's coming up or something like that. So you want to track the click-throughs on that side of it as well. If you're heavily using social, you want to track, I guess, number of followers, number of shares, number of likes, any anything that indicates... Um, interactivity or engagement by your audience. I love them. I just took a note of all that. I'm going to definitely implement more KPIs here on my tracking. Um, at the beginning of our conversation, you were talking about a new service you just launched for small nonprofits because normally you support medium-sized nonprofits to big ones. Can you explain how this service works and how can you help a small nonprofit that's just starting and need a brand new website but doesn't have much money to invest? I'm not going to name these other alternative platforms, but there are services out there that you can go really easily, sign up and pick a template and build your own website. The problem with that is you just kind of build it and you get frustrated with it because you can't make it do what you want or maybe it's totally fine right and you're you're okay with it i'm not going to knock any of those platforms what i can tell you though is through our meeting with multiple multiple clients we've completed through my agency over 270 projects for nonprofits and charities over the last seven years in meeting and discussing with them the biggest problem they have is time and expertise they don't want to learn another tool you don't want to go to one of these platforms and spend your time trying to figure it out and trying to, oh, why is this not working? <laughs> Way too often, that's kind of the, the complaint that we hear from people. So what we ended up doing was we built 
a solution for this, and it's a completely done for you platform that's really aimed at either startup nonprofits or nonprofits and charities that have a really low budget. We're talking right now, we're offering it at 50% off. So it's $36 a month. And we do everything for you from start to finish with it. There's a couple of web forms you fill out so we can get the actual real information. Because you know what you do, we don't know what you do. And uh -huh. that information is what we build the site out from. So we have our templates, we'll change the colors, we'll change the images, we'll put your content into it. And we're there to continually update the site for you as you need and whenever you need. The good part of this, David, I think is genius because you're there for them whenever they start growing. I coach a lot of small nonprofits throughout um, SBDC, the Small Business Development Center. And there is a point when the nonprofit started growing and they want to get out of these platforms and they need to purchase and start all over. And with you, that, that's not the case. What happens if a nonprofit start with this basic and then they grow out, they need to uh, create a logged area in their website? How do you support them in this growth process? We can actually, what we've done is as part of our product roadmap with this, we've built in functionality to migrate out. So we can migrate it out into our full, bigger type of project build that you might need. And then add the new functionalities that a nonprofit wants. Yeah. If, if, if you need a membership section on your site, we can build that out for you. If you want to build out some really big, massive human resources, job board type of system, we can build that out for you. There's lots of capability uh, in, in our team. We have a lot of breadth and depth in terms of what we can do and how we've helped other organizations. That's great. And my last question to you is what ongoing strategies and practice can nonprofit adopt to ensure their website remains effective and impactful in long term? So they don't need to relaunch again or redesign again. The first, you want to make sure that your website works really well on mobile devices. Google, even though they're really tight lipped on what their algorithm actually uses, they have outright said that sites that have a great mobile experience that work really well on mobile devices will rank higher than other sites. So in terms of nonprofits, we're all here to help humanity, to do something really great, to, to have a really great cause and have positive impact in the world and leave our impression and all of that wonderful stuff. At the end of the day, you're not the only nonprofit that's doing what you do. There are other nonprofits that do the same thing. So in that sense, I would say, let's call them competition. We're all here for the greater good. So they're not really competition, but they're competition, right? There's only so many dollars that I have or you have or anybody has that they that they can part with for donations. Everybody, all these organizations, they want the money. So for this, the purpose of this conversation, they're your competition, right? You want to make sure that you're spending the time on your website, that you're ranking higher in search than they are as best as you can for the keywords that you want to be found by. So spending time creating content in your website making sure that you're following the best practices in terms of accessibility, that the site looks mostly modern. Like, take a look at your site. Does it look like it was made in the last four or five years? You're probably fine. If it feels like your site is maybe 15 years old or feels like really, really super corporate, you want to probably rethink the design. You might not need to redo your site from scratch from the beginning versus just have some design work applied to it. Maybe some graphics switched out or some CSS or maybe just a little bit of tweaking or updating to the templates of your site. That's great. Thank you so much. And if anyone wants to get in contact with you, what is the best way, David, for them to bring their difficulties from the nonprofit and have a specific code from you or, or your support? Do you have any also free tools that you can offer? Absolutely. So. First thing that I want to say is go to wowdigital.com. That's our site on the website. You'll find a link, a call to action right there that says book a free consult. Click that. You'll get in touch with me and somebody in my team and we will we'll meet with you. We'll, we offer free consults. We want to help. It's 
actually helping is actually part of our core values uh, at Wow Digital. The other thing that I want to offer is a free website audit. So if anybody is kind of unsure about their website, if you're like, oh, I'm not sure, there's something kind of not right with this, just go to wowdigital.com slash audit. And there's a form right there. You can go and get a free website audit. That's so cool. I'm going to do that for my website. <laughs> Thank you, David, for your time. I think it's awesome what you're doing for nonprofits. They really care from the beginning and until they grow and for the best. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Bettina, and everybody listening. Last piece of advice, just take one step forward. Just do something to improve your digital presence, and it'll pay off down the road. Yeah, keep tuned with our future episodes, and I hope this information was helpful. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day. Thank you for listening to Wisdom for Nonprofits. To hear past and future episodes, please subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast channel. We appreciate your reviews and suggestions for future show topics. If you have a question or a suggestion, please write to us at podcast at wity.tech. More resources are available for you at our website, wity.tech. And please join us in the Wisdom for Nonprofits group on LinkedIn. Wisdom for Nonprofits is copyright 2019 by Bettina Meyer Flug and wity.tech. All rights reserved.